Hi, I'm Maddie Lamb, and I did Topic A, and I'm going to be talking to you today about the Emancipation Proclamation written by Abraham Lincoln. I'm now going to begin my oration. That on the first day of the January, in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves with any state or designed part of states, the people whereof shall be in rebellion, and shall forever thenceforward be free. In rebellion against the United States shall then be the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authority thereof, will recognize and maintain those freedoms of such persons, and will do no act or acts to repress such freedoms. That the executive will, on the first day of January, as said for above, the proclamation by design by the state and parts of states, and if any, and the people thereof will respectfully shall be in rebellion against the United States. And the fact that any states or people thereof shall be on that day in good faith represented in Congress and the members by chosen electives represent in Congress their two elections wherein majority of the qualified voters and such have participated in such absence of strong contravailing testimony and deemed conclusive thereof are not in rebellion against the United States. Now, therefore, I, Abraham Lincoln, the President of the United States, by the power and the virtue invested in me, Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Naval Authorities, in time against the actual armed rebellion against the authority and government, and fit and necessary for war, measure for suppressing the said rebellion, due on the first day of January, the year of our Lord, 1863. In accordance with my purpose, do so to do so do publicly proclaim for the first period of 100 days from the first day mentioned above, and I do so proclaim that they shall ever be free. And by the virtue of the power for the purpose I as for said, I do proclaim, proclaim and declare that all persons held as slaves within the said design states and parts of states are thenceforward and shall be free, and that the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authorities, thereof will recognize and maintain such freedoms unless consequences. And I hereby rejoin upon the people, so declared to be free, abstain from all violence unless in necessary self-defense, and I recommend them to in all cases be allowed that they suppress these freedoms, but in good faith. And I, Abraham Lincoln, therefore, with the power invested in me upon this act, I sincerely believe to act in justice, warranted by the Constitution upon military necessary, I invoke that the considerate judgment of mankind in the gracious favor of Almighty God. It witness I hereunto set in my hand and cause the seal of the United States to be affixed. Here's some background on Abraham Lincoln. He was the one who wrote it. He was the 16th president. He issued it twice. This was a document that was originally issued on September 22nd, 1862. This is a year before it was originally issued. He did this because his advisors the first time did not believe this was the right time to approve it. So he waited till a later date and he chose the 1st of January to start off a new year with a new proclamation. It was not, he was not an abol abolitionist. That abolitionist is someone who supports something and he did not support slavery so he was not going to abolish it and he did not think of equality. Most people think that this document wanted to just abolish slavery in which it did not. And he gave the speech on January 1st, 1863. Why did Abraham Lincoln do this? He did this for political reasons only, not to abolish slavery. The political reasons were the United States was growing apart, so he wanted to keep them together. And since the South succeeded, from the Union in that time, he took away their slaves to thenceforward make them come back together. And if they had no slaves, then they couldn't put into a war against them. He also did this because some people didn't believe he could actually do this, and they didn't realize it at the time that he could do this. But because they had already succeeded from the Union, and the Union was like the United States, and the Confederacy is the states that succeeded, they were their own country, and he couldn't proclaim something on a different country because he wasn't the president of this. I am now going to show you who actually Lincoln proclaimed on. In the red, this is the Union. These are all the states of the United States, which these are too, but 
These in here are states that still had slaves, and these had slaves too, but these are the ones that bordered, and this are the ones that succeeded later after. And then the states that are in the blue are the states that succeeded first. And there was actually a little part of Louisiana called parishes, and parishes are like counties, and it's Plaquemines, Terrebonne, Jefferson, St. John, St. Charles, St. James, Accession, Assumption, Terrebonne, La Fourche, St. Martin's, Orleans, and the city of New Orleans. And you can see it down there in the blue. They did not succeed from the Union. Why did the states leave? When Lincoln debated for his presidency, also as a, he was a senator of Illinois, when he debated against another sen senator, the other senator was for and against slavery. He wanted to give people the choice. Lincoln did not. He wanted to abolish slavery, but not at this time. He said some of this because of the first... Um, he said this because he wanted to get more votes, and since he wanted to abolish slavery, then he didn't, and he lost 30% of the votes. How did the slaves know that they were free? Slaves don't have, like, social media like we do today, so they couldn't post something and know that they were together and, like, you need to be free. The Union soldiers came and knocked on their doors and told them that they were free of the slave-boring houses. And also, they didn't. some slaves didn't want to leave. They didn't want to leave because they didn't want to go into the real world. They thought they were scared. And Lincoln said in the proclamation that they would have to reason for wages and go and make their own choices. Some slaves also did want to leave. And they were happy and so happy that they ended up joining the Union Army. In Galveston, Texas, there was a holiday called Juneteenth. Galveston was a country, it was a city in Texas. They wanted to keep their slaves as long as possible. And now Juneteenth is a holiday. It happened on June 19th was when they got their slaves taken away. And African Americans celebrate how they got free. And the celebrations have died down today. The effect of my proclamation, the Confederate War was April 1861 to April 1865. Lincoln was assassinated on April 1865, just a few days after the war had ended. This was the first law on slavery. There was no set laws before on slavery, and now this is the first one that was actually like set there. The slaves began to rebel in other states because they weren't free, and it wasn't fair that only some states got to be free because they had succeeded from the Union. And the war was... The Civil War was first about keeping the states together, and then the war eventually went over to slavery when Lincoln proclaimed this. And this also did not directly lead to the 13th Amendment, but later on it did. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Before any questions, could you please fill out what you learned? While the students are filling out their post assessment, is can you talk a little bit about the style of writing? Um, this seems like it's a very difficult document to recite. Um, do you feel like this is Lincoln, the public speaker, or does it feel a little bit more like Lincoln, the lawyer, and, and what came? What helped you get to that decision? I feel like he's Lincoln, the lawyer, the speaker, because he uses like a lot of fluff in there just to. He wanted to, people to think that he was abolishing slavery, but he actually wasn't, and that's why there's so much controversy between it. And since he uses, like, the word thenceforward, thenceforward eight different times in here, it just adds, like, it makes you think about it. So it seems like the debate really for the people that had succeeded, these Confederates, they would not have acknowledged this because they felt like they really did create their own country, correct? Yes. But Lincoln's point of view is different from theirs. How? Because he didn't want them to leave, and he feels like they he wanted to abolish slavery, but he didn't want to do it at that time because it wasn't the right time because of the Civil War, and the states were already becoming apart because of, of his election, 
and they already left right as soon as he was elected because they thought he was going to, but he did this to just keep them all together. Morgan? Um, earlier on, you talked about how they had him write it twice. Why do you, or what were the reasons why they had him like, do it Like, even now today, like, when President Obama did the State of the Union, he didn't just write it once, but the very first time he wrote it, the advisors didn't think it was the right time to put it out because it was so early on in like his presidency. They wanted to wait a few more months just to give it some time to see how everyone reacted, and they just wanted to wait like the right moment to pounce on them. It seems like in the proclamation there are some rewards for some states. Could you give the audience an example of some rewards for some states or parts of some states? And what might that reward be? The reward, reward that the states that didn't succeed, they got to they didn't have they got to keep their the states that did not succeed from the union, they got to keep their slaves if they had slaves. That was just one reward. He only did it to the people on the south because they had already left, and he wanted to take away their slaves so they wouldn't go into a war and without their slaves, and they wouldn't have too many to fight. And by freeing those slaves, it led the slaves that were free from the South, they came and joined the Union Army and gave them a better chance, and it made the South feel like really bad because they didn't have anything, and they felt like everything was being taken away from them, so it left them no other choice to just come back. So it seems like to me that this among average American citizens, it's most confused with the 13th Amendment. Hmm. Why do you think that is? Well, because it was freeing slaves, and that's what the 13th Amendment did. It abolished all slavery. This did not abolish all slavery. There was still slavery in the United States, and the 13th Amendment was different because it went for the whole United States. This only went to a little part of the United States, which really wasn't a part of the United States because they had succeeded from the Union. Other questions for Ms. Lamb? What was the main outcome that you hoped to see on most of the students' post-assessments? That if they believe that abolished slavery and then it didn't actually on their post-assessment assessment and I would hope to see that the real meaning, which I've said before. Did this primary document analysis change the way that you thought about Lincoln at all? Yes, it did. It did a lot because it showed me that he had a side that was very controlling. I always thought of him as like more of the laid-back president, but it showed me that he could take control when necessary. Any other questions? Give Ms. Lamb a round of applause.